Hiya! So on top of the films I watched on the AFI list this week, I also watched a number of other films. Uh, mostly these are available on Netflix, um, or some of them are on uh, Sky as well, for those of you in the UK. Um, so, films I watched this week, I watched Das Boot, I watched Sorry Wrong Number, Gandhi, and Escape from Alcatraz, and I also watched Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. So, a number of classics in there, and one from last year, um, which we'll get onto in a minute. So, I'm going to do a quick run through of all of those films. So, five films to get through, try and blast them quickly. Uh, number one, Das Boot. Das Boot's from 1981. I watched the, I don't know if there are any other versions, but I watched the theatrical cut, which is um, German language, it's uh, subtitled in English, which I don't mind, I quite like that. It stars Jürgen Prochnow as the captain. And a couple of other guys, um, give them the names. So we've got um, Herbert Gronemeyer and Klaus Venemann. I hope that's okay, dude. And the film's directed by Wolfgang Peterson. For me, what the film did was it, um, it was really thought provoking. Obviously, it's a tale of a German uh, World War II U boat, um, which is sort of setting out towards the end of the Second World War. There's some doubt in the minds of the older sailors about the wisdom of Hitler's plans and, you know, how well the war is going. Uh, there's an awful lot of propaganda stuff, you've got a lot of these sort of Hitler youth types coming on board, very young guys, very enthusiastic, but a bit wet behind the ears, don't really know what they're talking about. And you had this dichotomy between the two different types of crewmen. The elderly crewmen who've seen it all, they've done it all, they're experienced, they're practised, and they're more cynical. And then you've got the younger guys who are full of enthusiasm, getting drunk, um, yeah, but they don't really know what they're talking about. For me, the film treads a fine line, and it treads it expertly, between sort of acknowledging the bravery, the courage of the seamen, acknowledging their victories, acknowledging their losses, and the sort of, the terror. I think, I think in most films, and particularly in propaganda at the time, I, I studied I studied history. So at the time a lot of the propaganda was based around sneaky U-boats and sneaky submarines. And I think what the film attempted to do was to try and redress that balance really, to um, to show the fear and uh, how the tide had really turned against these U-boat guys who were, they're still going out, they're still doing their duties, still doing their job. And yet they, they had this sort of communal fear, this this fear of the water, fear of drowning. And the idea that you could be, the hull could be ruptured at some point by a depth charge, um, you know, you could be not crossed to death by pressure, but basically that you would, you would drown. So it's a, it's a massive fear that was portrayed excellently through the film. I guess it let you see some degree of pride in the courage of these German sailors without necessarily being proud of the intent of, let's say, the military strategy. Let's put it that way. And for that, it was, it was amazing. Prochnow, Jürgen Prochnow is, is excellent in the film. Um, he's, he's got a sort of, his stoicism is, is pronounced and really quite superb. So, I love the film. It's an 8 out of 10. Great start to my week, actually. Really fantastic start to my week. So the next film I watched was Sorry Wrong Number, which is from 1948. Now, I'd previously done a review for Double Indemnity, which was a few years earlier, and which also starred Barbara Stanwyck. So in this film you have Barbara Stanwyck playing a, let's say, a sort of bedridden woman who overhears a uh, telephone conversation, a plot. A plot about a murder. And she then spends the rest of the film trying to understand what's going on. Let's put it that way, no spoilers. The film also stars Burt Lancaster as um, her husband. And uh, it also stars the wonderful Egg Begley um, as the father. I loved Egg Begley in Twelve Angry Men. Good scene in another film. Again, this is a film noir. 
it's darkly lit, it has the whole flashback thing, so it's got a lot of what you'd expect from a film noir. Having watched the film, I did a little bit of research, I found that it's based on a one woman radio play. And I think that I can see how that would be as critically acclaimed as apparently it is. I've never heard the radio play, so I don't know. But to me, the problem with the film, and I, I found myself quite let down, having seen Dublin Indemnity, and what a great film it was, I found myself quite let down by this film. And it may be to do with being more of a modern viewer. I found myself looking for twists and plot reveals and, um, and interesting developments and little, um, uh, little nuances that weren't there. And I went through the whole film, and when the film ended, I just had a real sort of, huh, type feeling of, okay, well, then that's that. And unfortunately, because I, I thought Stanwyck was really good, I thought the acting was good in the film, but I didn't feel the film ever reached any heights of intrigue and, and interest, and um, it really did sort of procedurally tell you what was going on. And in that sense, it was it was disappointing. So I gave that film 6 out of 10. So for the sake of time, we'll move on. Um, next film I watched was Gandhi. Gandhi is like a who's who of British acting. Everyone's in the film, so let me just list off a few names. So I, I shan't remember all of these, but let me just list off a few. You've got um, Ben Kingsley as Gandhi, for which he won the Oscar. You've got Roshan Seth as Pandit Nehru. Um, who was excellent in the film. Then amongst a couple of US stars like Candice Bergen, you've also got uh, John Mills, Edward Fox, John Gilgood, Daniel Day-Lewis, Nigel Hawthorne, Richard Griffiths, Geraldine James, and finally another US guy, Martin G. The film's stuffed. It's, it's stuffed with great actors. Um, and for me, this film was, was, it was a revelation. I'd never seen much of the work of Richard Attenborough before, but this would certainly encourage me to go and see some other stuff he's done. You can see where the eight Academy Awards went. Um, the cast is stellar. The story is incredibly powerful. Obviously, it's based on a true story, and I found it riveting from start to finish. Ben Kingsley is captivating as Gandhi. Such a quiet, quiet performance, but so dominant when on screen. It was, yeah, it was, it was amazing to watch him. Um, now, I studied history, so I've got a fairly good idea of what went on at the time. This was a period I studied within my, um, when I was going through school at the university. So I'm pretty well aware of the actual events at the time. To me, the film didn't really pander to anyone. Uh, it didn't pander to Indians, it didn't pander to uh, let's say future Pakistanis um, or Bangladeshis. It didn't pander to the British. For me, there are certain events that you knew were coming up, like the events surrounding Amritsar, and I thought the film was... I think the film did a great job of trying to squarely stand in front of those events, hold a mirror up to them, and reflect back and show this is this is what happened. Yes, it's told through film, so there's going to be some artistic license taken, but as a film itself, as an experience of watching it, it was, oh, it was, it was captivating. And start to finish, I loved the film. I thought it had so much to offer. Gandhi for me is a 9 out of 10. I thought Gandhi was riveting. I could watch it again. There aren't many films over three hours uh, dealing with such sort of, um, biographical, um, could be quite dry uh, story, but I would absolutely watch Candy again, just for, just for some of the performances. Absolutely electric. I loved it. 9 out of 10. Great film. So, fourth film I watched this week, because I've got quite a few, was um, Escape from Alcatraz. I liked the film. Um, Clint Eastwood was really good in the film, it was directed by Don Siegel. I think it's the last film they ever collaborated on together. It's a good film. It's basically a film about a guy who skates from Africa jazz. Duh. So, you know. For me, there's very little character development through the film. In fact, I'd say there's no character development through the film. 
It's basically, here we are to the point in time when an event happens, i.e. a guy arrives in Alcatraz, and here we are at an event in time, a guy has escaped from Alcatraz. And then what happened in between? It's fine, it was intriguing, some interesting little bits, but there wasn't much suspense there for me. And for me it, um, it, it was, like to use a word I've used earlier, quite procedural. To talk about one thing with Escape from Alcatraz, um, I know, I think a lot of people might see this as a, as a comparison, uh, but I felt like I was being beaten over the head with it at the start of the film. There's so many similarities between this film and uh, Shawshank Redemption. I, you know, I noticed that immediately. You know, the feeding the little pet, you've got your elderly um, black prisoner who befriends the new guy coming in. Obviously the film has a very different sensibility to it in terms of how it goes, but it's still about a prison break. Um, and yeah, I thought, I mean, I much prefer Short Shrunk Tension. I think Short Shrunk is a, it's an amazing film. But um, it was funny to see these, um, to see these little, little nuances. It's almost as if someone saw this film and thought, I could make that better if it's fictional. And took a few bits and off they went with it. I'm not saying it's plagiarised, but if you watch the film, if you see the two, I think you'll see the same four or five things that are really very similar. So I gave Escape from Alcatraz a 7 out of 10. It's a good film. Well worth the watch, but nothing special. So last film I watched uh, was Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Now this came out in 2016 starring Tina Fey and Margaret Robbie and Martin Freeman. It's a film about a journalist who, uh, for various reasons, um, leaves her sort of comfortable life in the US and goes out to Afghanistan to cover the sort of uh, the ongoing peacekeeping mission in Afghanistan. Now, I won't say any more about the film than that, other than to say that I expected this to be a sort of Tina Fey um, comedy in the style of Sisters, something like that, and it really isn't. If that's what you're expecting, I think you could go into the film being disappointed or, as I did, really pleasantly surprised. I like virtually everything Tina Fey does. I thought this film had some real heart. It had some really, really good moments. I think Tina Fey is a really good actress. I think she she carries herself well in films. And Martin Freeman did a yeah, he did a pretty good job in this film, actually. He's, he was really good. Margot Robbie is gorgeous and, and wonderful and, you know, bow at her feet, as we always do. Um, she was excellent in the film, and she had by far and away the funniest lines of the film as well. Um, and I really enjoyed the film. I thought it was, um, I thought it was really pleasant. It told that story from an interesting angle. It's not the Hurt Locker by any means. You know, it's not a, um, it's not a war film in that sense. But it's set in a war environment. It's got a bit of a light-hearted edge to it, and to a really, really good watch. The only thing that took me out of the film was, um, weirdly enough, was the presence of Alfred Molina. Um, he did a good job in the role, but I've seen him do that kind of role before, and I liked him. I just wish they could have got someone, let's say someone almost unknown to play the role. And I love the, the way they deal with cultural differences really, really sort of sympathetically in the film where you you appreciate what it must be like when you come from one culture you're in another country you create little sort of enclaves of your own culture within that country and um, you get this sort of um, subtle clash and when two people aren't willing to compromise on their culture even though they're friends even though they're good friends they just can't express themselves in the way they want to I thought that was touching, really, really touching. So I gave the film 7, seven out of 10. I would really recommend it if you haven't seen it. It's not The Hurt Locker, it's not going to blow you away, it's not an amazing war film. It's also not a laugh out loud, you know, belly laugh comedy. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a good little film. Pleasant. Pleasant film to watch. Well worth a couple of hours of your time. Okay, so those are the films I watched this week that weren't on my AFI list. 
and didn't get to the cinema this week. Um, hopefully we'll do next week. And um, yeah, look forward to talking to you again then. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Bye!